Good morning. It's very early. Sager's on his way for a meeting. Um, Aaron is still in LA. I've only seen pictures of him topless, so who knows if he's actually coming home. He may have joined some sort of circuit. Omar's at the barn. Sun has rose. The birds have chirped. The day has begun. What's up, baby girl? How are you? Me too. When did you get home? Uh, what's today? Today is, uh, I don't know, Thursday? Yeah. So the convention was good? Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> is it busy? Yeah, it's so busy. Really? Yeah, it was crazy. It's so crazy because that first year I went there, that first year they ever had it. Yeah. And it, I remember walking around Rochester and being like, you know what, this place is a ghost town, you know, there's nothing here. And then everyone that I did tattoo the first day was like, yeah, I'm unemployed. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? This seal's fucked up. You know what I was like? Aaron posted a picture of him with his shirt off last night. Did you yeah. see that? I saw him. I mean, from an internet perspective, it's kind of weird. You know, like, when he's like, I'm gonna see my friend in that way, and every picture he's topless. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you, I know you haven't because you've been so busy, but have you seen the new God of War game? Yeah. Jesus. I, 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 haven't, worked, you know, I haven't played it or anything. But I, went, I went and got it for twitching and it's fucking ridiculous. It's hard to play. It's a different, different kind of nerd game. Different kind of nerd game. Yeah, you just have to move. The, the dudes move differently. It's funny. Well, I should just do a tattoo convention circuit tour. Dude, that's what I was thinking. And I was like, I wanted to tell you that when I was out there. I was like, I'll wait until I talk to him when I get home. It, I'm but stoked to have him. you do that? It's like 20. That's a lot of tattoos in two days. Yeah. It was ridiculous. I'm not <laughs> built like that anymore. You don't have to do that. Though. I do like, one a day. I would just have to like figure out, like it'd have to be like in a row. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. It would have to be like, yeah. I want to do 10 or something in a row. Week after week after week. During that week, in between conventions, doing like a pop-up somewhere. Or whatever. Also, I know you said I didn't need to, but I need that code for that ink because I'm gonna tattoo you when I'm on the road. I do three golden tickets. Mm -hmm. One of them is a pair of Yeezys. We do mm -hmm. like, which Yeezys? I don't care. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. not, not any. Fucking <laughs> really go with it, dog. No. Six and a half turtle doves. No. <laughs> Everybody on StockX immediately, as soon as they hear, it, fucking raises their prices on fucking their Yeezys. Should be fucking making duplicates of all this shit, so I'm mean, gonna keep going backwards when you're like, I don't like that. Yeah. I think I like it. So make sure it can be red. I think I just have to see it print, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's the worst part. I don't know. Every time Kanye fucking tweets, I feel like you're talking. Bro, isn't it fucking crazy right now? How much running the D shit's in there? I don't know. just print over it. We can't just print over it. Why can't we? Because it's still, it's still running on D. Print right over it. Like, you literally have it poking out of the sides, so you can't see it. <laughs> That's not how that works. What are you talking about? It's a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer. No matter how much I print on it, the run on MD layer, you will see. Like, you'll see run on MD. No what if you print black over it? It's, you'll still, it'll be like three dimensional. Really? You'll see it, yeah. That's stupid. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. I mean, we can play with it. Uh, weekly meeting with Sager. Over, dude, lately is just a lot of meetings and a lot of talking. All day yesterday, other than a Twitch stream. Twitch stream was actually kind of fun yesterday. I twitched for a long time. I got a PlayStation Pro because I let Earn borrow the PlayStation, but Earn was in LA. I wanted to play God of War all day yesterday. That's where we're at. So I've been playing God of War on Twitch. It's pretty fun. Um, I've never played a God of War before, but that's what I did yesterday, as well as take phone calls. We have another AI drop scheduled. I have AI stuff ready to go, but we're not caught up. But I have more AI stuff coming. It's just not coming this week. So what we decided to do, and to do the opportunity to give away some money, for shoes, we're gonna do mystery bags this week. So this Sunday, there's gonna be mystery bags loaded and they could be from anything that I've dropped in the last, I think like six months. Everything before that is pretty much gone. It could be anything, it could be Ted, it could be Happy Cry, a straight up mystery, something you've never seen before, a one of one. Mystery bags usually come with more than one item. They're guaranteed at least one shirt and one Sticker. Earn forgets to put the sticker in, but they're guaranteed those things. But most come with extra items. Some come super stacked up. Like some people last time got like a hoodie, two long sleeves, a t shirt, lanyard, stickers, like a whole package. So uh, mystery bags, if you know, they go quickly. And this time, I'm even going to do golden tickets for the mystery bags. And I'm going to do three of them. There's going to be one for a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. So that that's going to be the golden grail. 
That's the grail ticket, getting you a grail shoe of your choice. If not, then you can use the thousand dollars for whatever you need to. And then um, the other two tickets will be for $400. Also could use towards a shoe, whatever, whatever you want. And uh, so yeah, but that's the idea. We're gonna do that Sunday at 10 a.m. Mountain time, normal, normal time, normal everything, mystery bag drop, boom, boom, boom. But so talking about the tour, basically what the rest of my afternoon is gonna be is dealing with this stuff. Today is actually an off day from the gym, which I'm really excited about because my body is super sore. Uh, I switched up my routine. Now I'm not doing uh, necessarily split body parts. I'm doing upper body one day, lower body the next day, day off, upper body, lower body, and then the frequency is just changed. Two days are heavy lifting days, and then the other two days are lighter with more frequency. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then the fifth day is just isolation stuff if I feel like it, it's whatever. Um, just a day in the gym, a little nice little light day. So eating has been pretty easy so far. I'm still fasting, generally like 16 hours. Sometimes it's longer, not really ever shorter, but there have been some days where I've gone like 20 hours and my eating window has shrunk to like four. Yeah, it gets easier and easier as the days go by. I walk Water is super easy. I've been pounding water. Now that the roar is here, it's almost simple. I'm kind of glad. I don't fall back into those traps of soda and just bad habits. It's so easy. Been drinking water. That's really it. Water and tea. Just an update on the fitness regimen. Um, speaking of which, because I bought new knives, pots and pans. So with like keto type diet, you know, it's harder to make sweets. Like sweets are the one thing. I don't really crave a lot of chocolate usually, but um, you can make a lot of really cool desserts basically if you want. That, that's the one big thing about diet or like trying to eat healthy is not being creative with what you eat and getting into the habit of eating everything, the same thing every day. I eat the same salad pretty much every day because I love it. But at night I have to kind of switch it up. If I just eat like a steak and vegetables every night, I'll get bored and then eventually I want pizza or some random thing. So finding interesting ways to make food has been cool. It's always pretty much the thing I enjoy most about any kind of like dietary change. So I ordered a mixer and I think it's downstairs. So I'm gonna go get my packages down stairs and see what's up. I'll be right back. Ugh. This smells interesting. I don't know about this. It literally sounds like rocks. Oh no, it's not. Oh, sugar-free chocolate chips. Speaking of bacon, I don't know what, so these are sugar-free chocolate chips that I got. Tinker. Uh, Nice. So glad this didn't just come in kid sizes like at first. Dope. Motherfucking parlays are here. Wow, 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 wow. These are the dope ones. Go grab your mom or your girlfriend, maybe. I'd be excited about this one. Yeah, son. That KitchenAid life. So, now I got a mixer. I know it seems like I'm buying a lot of random things. You don't have to buy any of this stuff like at all, do all these things pretty much without it. I am sort of replacing things I never bought again after I lost everything that I owned. When I'm buying dishes and like pots and pans and a mixer, it's all shit that I've owned at one point in my life and now don't own anymore. I'm just kind of replacing it. And I've been given a reason to replace it, which I've sort of just disregarded in the past. But now this has given me a reason to, which I appreciate. And I think that's cool how evolution of myself gets me to do things that I normally wouldn't do because they're applicable once I change my mindset. It's cool. I don't really know how to articulate it other than that, but it's cool. But you don't have to buy all this stuff. I don't want anyone to think like, hey, if you wanna if you wanna go on some sort of health journey, you need to spend a couple of thousand dollars because you absolutely don't. I'm just fortunate enough now that I can replace a lot of the shit that I've lost. Adidas have been great partners and they've let Yeezy be Yeezy. This could have never happened at Nike. Bing, bing. <laughs> So I need something percussive and I found this S and T sound. It's fucking actually hot. 
All right, so let's just talk about it, because my Twitter, like, some people think I shouldn't talk about certain things, but we don't care what those people think. Some people think I should pay this bill. I don't care what they think. It's, it's direct deposited. So, there's been a lot, a lot of talk, because Kanye West returned to Twitter. At first, everyone was really excited. It's Kanye West returned to Twitter and was talking about being an individual and thinking for yourself, and, um, must be a, must be a theme. You know, and just sort of, doing Kanye things, you know? And then once he started to say certain things about certain people, um, people began to cancel him. Some people who really write really bad articles wrote bad articles about him. People were forced to gather an opinion in their eyes. There's tweets, there's jokes, there's shade, there's hate, there's fucking yelling, there's screaming, there's arguing. All these things have happened because Kanye started tweeting. And then of course the biggest thing is the Trump issue and we don't talk politics here. There's a reason we don't talk politics here it's because I don't talk about politics in my real life I believe in a lot of things I believe in being a good person I believe in treating people equally but I don't believe in arguing amongst the community because I don't agree with their choices or decisions or whatever um, even if I take the time to think about their choices or decisions for me personally I don't really think about what a lot of other people think you know I don't necessarily worry about it until it's in my face and we're having a dialogue. I just try to treat, you know, in a very simple state, I try to treat people how I want to be treated. I know we've all heard that since probably the first day we were born, but obviously that doesn't happen everywhere and the world is a real place and shit happens. And there's people we don't agree with. There's people that we dislike very much. There's people we want to fight. There's people that some people want to kill. There's all kinds of just like fucked up shit going on, you know? There's racism, sexism, oppression on all forms that, you know, there's a lot of really bad negative shit about being alive. There's also a lot of really cool, awesome shit about being alive. Politically scoped, now a lot of people are really upset, calling to boycott certain things. A lot of people want to know my position of because Kanye said something about Trump and says he loves Trump. I think that a lot of people just aren't ready for this conversation. Uh, I think that Kanye has points. I think he has valid points about certain things. Every single human being walking this planet uh, deserves to be heard out. Sometimes it's too far. It's, it's too late. They haven't been heard for long enough and it's too late. Something tragic happens. Something bad happens. Uh, it, it just goes way too far. I do think moving forward because it seems that when we reference these things we're always talking about what's been done in the past you know like uh especially with politicians a lot of times we're not referencing people we're referencing policies and we're referencing people coming up inside of an environment that does not really allow for them to have independence. Everything sort of mirrors each other. The sneaker world has politics. It's not as effective on the world, but it exists. So essentially, without getting political, because I don't want to get political here, I don't want to talk about people's personal beliefs or issues or who they support because that does not matter. That's not what we're talking about. All I really want to do is say, like, keep an open mind. You can make decisions that you want to make and keep an open mind. But when Kanye's saying something like what he's saying, he's, yes, there's a level of it getting that first initial reaction to be like, what the fuck? But if you really stop and think about what he's saying, and if you really stop and take some sort of inventory about your own personal involvement in these issues, you know, it's like if politics didn't matter to you last month before Kanye said anything, it really shouldn't matter to you now either. There's plenty of people out here who don't speak up about their political beliefs and keep it under the radar, never say anything because they want to sell product, never take a stand or put any kind of new thought into the air. It's always just keep keep everything even. It is what it is. The Kanye tweets are Kanye's tweets. Yes, he has an album coming out. I don't know if that's better than trying to be sold to every single day. I don't think that really matters. I think it's irrelevant. And I think that if you're an artist, disappearing for a little while is sort of mandatory. It's actually really hard for me to create things sometimes if I don't disappear for at least a day or two. You know, I can only imagine the thoughts that would conjure up in my brain if I disappeared for an entire year, had tons of money, and worked on whatever I wanted, and thought about only the things that I wanted to think about. I don't, politically, I don't think that anyone is okay. <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, once you try to climb that tree, there's a lot of branches on it. You end up doing things that you maybe not would normally do because you're on a different journey. So politically, I really can't ever sit back and just be like, this is a good candidate. Because I don't know, I don't know when other people are good candidates for something. I know when I'm a good candidate for something, and that's why I concentrate on myself mostly, and the people directly around me, and try to help the other people on the outskirts as much as I can. What we tend to do over and over again is make heroes, let people become our heroes, and then destroying them. Letting them opening up to us, we disregard them, we say they've changed, they've fallen off. We, we do this with everybody. We do this with relationships, you know, and I I think 
overall, the entire world has like post-traumatic stress disorder and we continuously talk about the past. We continuously talk about what's happened and everyone's always, you know, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't remember history, you're doomed to repeat it, which, you know, Essentially, it's true, but at the same time, it doesn't, that, I mean, in a relationship, like a personal relationship, if you talked about every single fight that you had every single day prior to that day, you would never get anywhere. You would never create new memories. You would never create a new life. Your relationship would just be, your relationship would just be commentating on it from one point to another point. That's not growth. That's not progress. And I think that's really what Kanye is trying to say. Hey, let's drop some of the bullshit. Let's stop arguing about some of this dumb shit. Like, yes, there are some fucked up policies in this world that fuck a lot of people up in fucked up ways. We cannot fix any of this stuff if it's completely separate. We can't fix all this stuff if we're just gonna keep arguing red versus blue, black versus white. Like we're we're never gonna fix the shit. Keep doing what we're doing, then that's the way it'll stay. That's the way it'll stay. If you could open your mind enough just to hear people out and discuss ideas without attacking each other, then maybe there'll be progress. But I don't have a lot. I don't. I don't have a lot of. Uh, I don't have a lot of hope in that manner. I don't think that the world wants to change. I think that people really, really love arguing, and I think people really love being the prisoner and the guard of our fucking problem. Not that there's not fucked up people and power hungry people and people that are trying to fuck you up. People that are trying to oppress and stomp people down and kill. I'm not that those people don't exist, but we're also arguing about a lot of petty shit here and there. There's so much squabbling going on everywhere. The knots are so tied that corruption essentially happens and almost all people at some point have more open mind and not be so offended when someone thinks differently than you. Just like you wearing Nikes right now. I love you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, just just to address it. Don't get political in the comments. I'll literally fucking delete every single one. I will. I'll straight up delete them all. So don't even don't even waste your time. Take that shit over Facebook. I made tacos and the tacos are the shells are made of just cheese. You literally can microwave shredded cheese in a circle for like 45 seconds and then fold it. The second one I left in the microwave too long, so I made is that a tostada? I have no idea, but that's my lunch. No more wants it. It's my lunch. You should go lay down. Go lay down. Go to dog stuff. Check myself out in the viewfinder real quick. I know it drives some people crazy. For the record, the other day, when I was doing the NMDs that I bought, I forgot. I have the red pair. I totally forgot to show you. So this is another super fire pair. A lot of people are asking me about the yellow pair now. Like a lot. And the yellow pair, which is not in this room, um, check your local Foot Locker. Foot Locker Foot Action, most of them are on sale. I've seen them as low as 90 bucks. So good luck. I know they're out there in random places where generally there's no heat at all. Today's shoe has no boost. It was a gift. Feels good to get gifts in general, but it feels really good to get gifts, to have my opinion valued for people to want me to check things out. Uh, means more to me than getting a shoe that has boost in it. So when someone sends me something because they're truly interested in what I wanna know, uh, I do appreciate it and I'm humbled by it. So, you know, people like to comment like, oh, it's no boost. He's been doing a lot of stuff with no boost lately. Like, I'm just being a real person. So, <laughs> let's just, let's just, uh, Let's just cut the bullshit. I still prefer Boost over any shoe. I'm just literally doing this shit for y'all. You know what I mean? I'm fucking putting my feet through all kinds of experiments so I can share my experience with you. Still, some people just don't talk shit. But anyway, I did wear the 500s pretty much all weekend because I wanted to try it. I was like, man, it's probably been at least a year, if not two, since I wore a shoe that didn't have a full boost, or at least a mostly boost midsole for a whole day. So I wore the 500s pretty much all weekend. My verdict is still pretty much the same. They're definitely not boost. But I will admit that not having a boost shoe isn't the end of the world. Like, I'm not dying. It's not like... Oh my God, my feet are being broken. This sucks, I hate it. I do prefer the comfort, and if it's about what I prefer, I'm definitely going for boost. But some of these other shoes aren't uncomfortable. They're just, for me, not as comfortable as the boost shit. Some people don't like boost. A lot of people I talk to think it's too squishy. So, you know, it takes all kinds. It takes a village. You can't move a mountain in a day. But any, anyway, a new model from Adidas called the Commanda. It could be Commanda or Commanda. Either way, I just sort of sound, make it sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger is saying Commander, and that's the way it sounds to me. So Commanda, that's the way I do it. But black box with some gold branding. And then size 13, I have two different colors. I have the black pair that's on my feet, and I also have this 
There's the black pair. The Commander. This is a shoe that is directly referenced out of Adidas's archives. You will see similarities in this shoe to things you've seen before. The Stan Smith three stripes. It sort of has that gazelle samba look. Some have even said it almost looks like a puma, which I could kind of see. But I did some research today and could really find absolutely nothing. So I reached out to some people, got a little bit of information, and the information that I received is it's not necessarily a reference from any of those shoes, but it's referenced from late 70s, early 80s Adidas lounge shoes. There's no like actual model. So I don't know, you know, maybe some of these things from the original prototype from one archive pair made it on to Stan Smith's and other models. Maybe they took cues from here. Who knows where the actual uh, cord plug them to the wall. This is referenced from the heritage of Adidas and Adidas Originals. And I feel like that's kind of where we're going. Adidas is just hitting the archives heavy and just reimagining things, which I've kind of referenced as the 500. Things are being approached with fresh and new ideas, new minds, uh, new generation, and we're getting things that we never got before. This shoe, I don't think anyone can say you've ever got before. Some people will say it has a similarity to a Yeezy. I think that's kind of a stretch. It does have like similar tooling, but you know, that's also to say like what came first, you know, the Yeezy or the, the gum sole, which is super crazy, very profier. I don't know if it is gum originally, but the sole itself is from an archived pair that apparently never released. So these, you know, that I think is kind of cool that we might be getting a look into um, pieces of history that may have been forgotten or not worked out fully. So I think that's cool. They're, uh, from a storytelling standpoint, if they're accessing those archives and telling a new story with old ideas, I think that's cool. But I also need clarification on it, because again, I might just be going off in some like high tangent, because I thought the NMDs were satellite. It's definitely stealth. It says it on adidas.com. It's called the stealth pack. So, you know, I, sometimes I just make shit up in my mind. But striking nonetheless, it's definitely a shoe when you see you form an opinion about one way or the other. So if attention is what you're looking for, attention you shall get. Upper is entirely suede. It's very nice, very nice suede. Super smooth, except for the tongue, which is a double kind of folded over, half folded over PK slab. This is just all prime knit. So you have a full prime knit tongue, and then the, on the interior in here. The interior is leather. So the inside of the shoe is leather. It's different for me. I wore a leather shoe all day, which hasn't happened in a long time. Um, everyone knows I prefer PK all day, and that's still true. I will say that this prominent tongue does wonders, not making it a completely leather shoe. This is a great compromise. That was pretty comfortable. After wearing the shoe for like a little while, it was comfortable enough. Felt like just wearing any other normal base kind of skate shoe. I would say the real striking thing about this shoe in comfort terms is the PK tongue and then it has an ortholite sole which seems to do a lot for the shoes that have them because um, it's fairly comfortable walking around but again just like a I wouldn't say it's any I'd say it feels very similar to like really just any regular shoe I've worn. So don't go expecting like boost type things, response, any of that. It's not any kind of performance shoe whatsoever. Strictly lifestyle, strictly heritage. Other than suede and PK, the heel area is leather. Gold Adidas Commando branding on the lateral side. Toe box as well as kind of all over the upper, there's geometric stitching and some of it has a rhyme and reason. Like this is for the leather, but then this sort of like sacred geometric pattern on the toe box area it doesn't really have any rhyme or reason that i can tell it's just uh cosmetic as far as fit goes i'd say they are extremely true to size they are a little difficult to get on at first because of the heel being just straight up leather it's going to take a minute it's almost like bowling shoe getting on you know at first but once you get in it's nice and comfortable lockdown is nice there's really no room there's no toe wiggling room or anything like that going on so half size and down doesn't seem smart. And there is an insole, but like I said, it's ortholite. You probably don't want to take it. Uh, the oversized heel tab is really, because this is modeled after what I think is a slip on. It makes the shoe look like it's loose in the heel. It's not, and this actually helps you slide on the shoe. I tried to slide on my foot like an Ultra Booster NMD. Here's no stretch. If I step down in the shoe and pull this up, the shoe slides on fairly well. Uh, most of the comfort is going to come from the PK tongue, the ortholite sole, and then the fact that Gum outsole is, like most new Adidas models, wider sole than your standard, like regular, I guess, tennis shoe. So, you know, if you compare this sole to like a Stan Smith, I feel like this is a lot wider. It has that teardrop type shape, like Boost shoes or Yeezys or Pure Boost or any, 
which just adds to that stability on the stand. I appreciate it. Even if you look at this shoe, it kind of looks like it looks like gum that's been sort of melted down a little bit and flattened out from weight. So that does provide a little bit of stability for this type of shoe. As everyone knows, this is not my favorite type of shoe. I'm not going to sit here and hype it up as if this is like changed my life. It has not. I know a lot of you out there are interested in it. A lot of you don't aren't spoiled bitches and don't need just boost all the time. So that's my review. I can't say whether or not it's a must cop or not. I think that depends on personal preference. And I think that uh, from this point on, we'll leave all must cops are personal preference. So to be honest, I don't know if it's a pair that I'll wear often. I, I, I highly doubt it. It is a gift and I do appreciate it. And um, it was cool to take a look at them. Made me kind of dive into what the shoe was all about. So, you know. Uh, these release either tomorrow or Saturday. Retail is 150. I don't know if there's a lot of hype. I don't know what the if there's a lot of them. I don't know if it's GR. I don't know if it's limited. I have no idea. It's been an interesting couple of days or week trying out a lot of shoes with no boost. It's brought on a lot of chit chat about me trying out Nikes and things like that. Probably not gonna happen. I'm actually probably never gonna say that name again. And then um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, that's the day. I'm gonna get out of here. Honestly, just get back to work and. Um, yeah, see you guys tomorrow. See you guys for a mystery bag drop this weekend that is gonna be super crazy. $20 and $40 bags. $20 shirts, you're guaranteed a t-shirt at least. $40 bags, you're guaranteed at least a hoodie or sweatshirt type clothing. And then there's three golden tickets. One for $1,000, two for $400. So, it's lit. All right, peace. <laughs>